Okay, my name is Brett Castilla. I'm going to be talking about the High U application program. I'm going to be talking about the design context and design goals for this program. I'm going to be going through very quickly, and I'm going to try to catch us up by the our schedule again. So I'm really going to run through things very quickly. Most of what we could talk about, especially if you'd like to talk about the software technologies that were used, that are very fascinating, I think. Four o'clock in room A, we'll have plenty of time to actually look at the software in action. We'll have plenty of time to talk about other issues. Now I'm just going to go through things very quickly about design context and design goals. Okay. Now, the high-rise image data has been pointed out. These are very large images. We're using JPEG 2000 to deal with these images. And that creates some very interesting challenges to be able to deliver this data to the end users. From our point of view, the end users are the general public. Yes, we want to serve the scientists, but our mandate is to serve the general public. So this application needs to serve the general public. We take particular advantage of JPEG 2000 to accomplish this image data delivery uh, goal. Uh, JPEG 2000 allows for selective image area and resolution rendering from one source file. JPEG 2000 specifies an internet protocol called JPEG. We work with a JPEG server. We actually have a, more than one server at High Rock, and I believe other sites are starting to use JPEG servers as well. And that means that other applications can access our servers using the JPEG protocol. There is an open public JPEG server so that if your application is using JPEG, we will deliver the data directly to you. Okay? Now, when I say that we deliver the data, I mean we will deliver the code string. That is, your client needs to be able to render the data into pixels. He says there's still that issue of JPEG 2000, and I'm hoping maybe later in this conference we can talk about some of those JPEG 2000 issues, which are very interesting. Um, Highview takes advantage of multi-threading capabilities in the engine that we're using to deal with JPEG 2000. We use the Copy software engine. It in itself is heavily multi-threaded. That means that when it comes time to render, if your machine has a CPU uh, lines of execution on it, all eight lines will automatically be used and your rendering goes really fast. If you have a single CPU, it'll still work, but not as fast. We also take advantage of other technologies. High view does background prefetch rendering, the kinds of things you would do in the display where you want to maximize the user's experience. Huge incremental rendering for fast preamp to keep the GUI alive, to keep the interactiveness of the interface up. We provide URL drag and drop. That means you go to a web browser, if you like what you see in the web browser, you go to high-res website, you go to other URLs other websites. I'm not sure if OEL and other sources are giving you a URL to the data source, the JP2 source. If it does, you can drag that right on Hyu. Hyu will recognize that, convert it into the appropriate JP URL and access the High Rock JP to the server and deliver that data to you directly through Hyu interactively. And how you would got support the conventional image bar file formats. So you got a PNG, you got a TIFF, those kinds of things. It works with those two. So delivering the science. Yeah, we want to get that image data out to the public, but the public's interest is somewhat different than the scientist's interest. But I did not want to write a separate, separate application. So this application needs to be useful to scientists without being a science application but it needs to be useful to the public 
in a way that is simple to use, but entices interest in the science. So there was a kind of a dilemma, if you will, about how to go about this. This is a very interesting challenge. So the software was designed to accommodate all these diverse interests to some extent. I've used since its first release and last, it was six months since i has been released, we've had about 5,000 downloads of HiView, and we asked users to tell us what they intend to use HiView for. It's very interesting to see what they say. It's surprising how many people are going to say. And so we have scientists and researchers from all over the world. We have educators, students, teachers. We have artists, people in the communication mediums, uh, TV, broadcast, those kinds of things. And of course, we have people who just in the general public, they're just curious, they want to expose their child to science, they want to provide that kind of interest opportunity. So Heidi is getting to the audience we want to get to, but it needs to provide the capabilities that will entice the user farther into the science and still be a useful tool to our science team. So this is a big challenge for us. Heidi is not intended to provide scientific analysis tools. I've seen lots of useful tools. Those are really good and excellent. Heidi does not do that. Heidi is meant to be useful to a scientist, like a scientist two members of our high res use this, to provide a quick look, a quick view as a prelude, prelude to deciding if you're going to go deeper. So it can do some superficial things, and of course, I'm always getting demands to do more. But it's not a scientific analysis tool. It's a data exploration tool. The tools that are there for science unfold to the degree that you're interested in looking at those things. Okay, and that means you can do simple image navigation. Where am I in the image? You can do some interesting statistics, but they're not very exotic or sophisticated, but they're interesting. Histograms of what's in the image data. To display contrast stretching, and then get into data mapping with an interactive graph that encourages the user to explore what's going on in the data by interacting with the, the mapping, the graph that maps the data from the source to the display. All the tools are interactive. The user is meant to get very quick, immediate results. It should be satisfying to the user. We provide a user's guide. It's for the general public. It's also for scientists. They need user's guides, too. So the, the user's guide will have a quick tour. This is how the tool works. Take you through. This is what the controls are. So you get to know the basics. How to scroll. How to do the panning or scale. How to do the basic stuff. And introduce the tools. And then introduce some of the science concepts, but not in a heavy way. Enough, again, to entice, entice in for the general public. So we're, we're addressing this uh, mandate. We have an educational mandate. And Hyvee is intended to address that mandate with one tool that's not a toy. It is a real tool. But, so Hyvee is really an educational tool that has real science in it. And the theme of this tool is image data exploration. That's the thing that we're looking at. The, side, the software is available in these different uh, packages. They're real simple drop onto your machine packages. They're available, it's available for OS 10, Apple machines, Windows machines, Linux machines. Just drop the installer on, it just works. Um, there's a, a website where you can go get it. Um, you can email me if you have any questions about using it. Or come to the demo, I'll show you how it actually works and you can look at the real pretty pictures. It's really cool. Anything else? Thank you.